Okay, y'all. I know y'all gonna come on in, but I am. I decided to share this little moment with you all. My mom is teaching me how to slice fresh corn. For fried corn. For fried corn. She's been trying to teach me this, I know, 20 years. And I'm just now slowing down to actually listen and take the time to learn how to cut it. So we decided to share this moment with you all. For those that don't know, we're going to do a little quick video by my mom on showing you how to slice fresh corn. So hold on, here we go. All right, mama. So tell us what we need to know about slicing this fresh corn. Slicing fresh corn came when there wasn't enough food. And you didn't have but a few eels of corn left and you had to feed the family. So boiling it was not gonna be enough. So in order to do that, they learned how to slice the corn off the cob. And you have to do it two or three times. Some corn you can do it twice. Some corn, it all depends on how plump it is. You can cut it three times to get the slice out of there. But you would be surprised how much corn you could get off one ear when you sliced it in order to make fried cream corn. So what you're doing now is you're slicing the very um, slicing outer side. The very outer. So it's the, the first thin the layer first of the corn. Thin, the first outer layer. The little puff off the corn. You just slice them till you get them all the way around. Once you go all the way around, you're going to go for your second layer. I think I done got all of those off. Now I'm going for my second layer. And they're going to be more binded together. So you got to be really, really careful. You can't be in a hurry for this. It's no hurry. We would be in school all day when mom's going to be at home slicing corn or preparing the meals because it took all day. But you have enough to feed your family. So one ear of corn could feed how many people? For a serving, maybe three. Because by the time you get through, you're going to... Uh, the corn have like a milk in it. Right. So you're going to... You have to... You're going to mash it down to get the milk out of it. And they would take it after they got through with it, and they would wet the ears down in order to get the excess milk out of the out of the out of the uh, cob. So we are gonna make us some fried corn. And then sometimes if they had a tomato, they would cut a tomato in it. But the thing was to get the skillet hot. And you had to put well, they did. Sometimes they did white meat uh, back in that day. Um, you could do bacon. They would fry a little bacon in the skillet because you had to have a little bit of hot grease. You know, you don't have to go through all those necessary steps now like you, you, you know, back then with the uh, bacon and right. know, white meat. You know, you could use some butter. Right. Uh, Hey, Miss Annie, I see you joined us. You got to have some kind of um, oil in your skillet. You can use vegetable oil. Now, you don't have to go as deep as having this, you know, because I am I I don't too much like to use meat grease. So now I think we done cut about as much as we can. You'll notice when you can't slice anymore, it'll get kind of stubble. But you want those slices to be as thin as possible. So... So for those that just joined us, we I'm learning how to slice fresh corn for the first time. So we've cut it down to like several layers. So we're down to pretty much the husk. The husk. And so and what are you doing now, Mom? Now I'm taking a knife and mashing it down with and the milk that's in the carb is going is literally coming out of the carb. You can see it sticking to the knife. Right. And you'll see the little milky, see the little milk down in there? That's what you we call necessary to the goody poet. But then you're going to wet your ears of corn after you get through shucking, uh, squeezing all the milk that you can out of the cob. 
See, my problem is, is I don't slow down. I'm always rushing, always busy. Don't take the time out. But this could be pre-done. You could do this, put it in a Ziploc freezer bag, and put it in the freezer. You don't have to. This just one of them days, you know, you're not in a hurry. And you can do it while you got the corn seed. We would take it, and in the summertime, we would buy bushels of corn. And we would do it, and we would freeze it for the winter. So, cause in winter, winter time, see how much corn you got out of two ears of corn? You got almost a half a bowl of corn. So, Miss Annie says, I don't know if you know Miss Annie, my mom, but she's a, a nurse, a retired nurse from UAB that taught me a lot of stuff. She just chimed in. She said, that's the way she learned how to do it. Right. And then you wet your ears of corn. So we're going with a hydrant. Okay. You just you. wet them. Just wet them real good. Cut your water off and just take your hands and squeeze. Squeeze. Oh. And so what is... What is what this, you... just, just, this just getting the extra milk out of the cob. Oh, okay. You squeeze them like you're wringing out a rag. She said, then she said, then they gave the cob to the pigs. Then we gave the cob to the pigs, right. And you couldn't use it no more because they would eat it. So the pigs would eat it. Okay. You See, can I don't just, know about that, We don't Annie. have any pigs anymore, so now we just have to discard them in the garbage. In the trash can. <laughs> so now you get you a spoon, and you see how much corn you got out of two ears of corn? Right. And see, it's going to even give you more once you begin to fry it. But then I'm gonna show you another trick how you're gonna make this this here thick. So what we're gonna do is fly off the Yeah, out the, out the door, off the door, the bag of flowers. So in that, then that just pretty. That is so pretty.